Hello, I'm Dr. Marla Shapiro. I'm a member of the board of the International Menopause Society, and today we're fortunate to be joined by Dr. Stephen Goldstein. Steve, will you identify yourself to the audience? Thank you, Marla. Uh, I'm Steve Goldstein, as she said. I'm currently the president of the International Menopause Society. Uh, I'm also a professor of obstetrics and gynecology at the New York University Grossman School of Medicine in New York City in the United States. Uh, and I'm thrilled to be here today to talk to you basically about bone health of uh, the role of muscle. So let's first talk for our healthcare professionals who are listening to us, just to reiterate again, how important bone health is for our patients and for us to be aware of this when we're seeing our patients. Well, there's a, a journal in the States called OBG Management. Uh, and for many years, I wrote the update on osteoporosis. And a couple of years ago, I made them change this to update on bone health, because it's been my perception that too many healthcare providers uh, simply order a bone density test, a DEXA test, and then they treat the score on the DEXA test. My goal is not that you have a better score when you're 82 years old. My goal is that you do not break your hip when you're 82 years old. And so, so really you're talking, you're talking here about the evolution of using a bone density as a threshold for treatment rather than looking at everything that accounts for risk for fracture, which is way more important as you mentioned. Sure, I mean, understand that in the United States, 21% of people who break their hip will be dead within one year. Some of those from short-term things like pneumonia or pulmonary emboli, and some of those uh, are long-term. 25% of these women will have to enter long-term long healthcare facilities like nursing homes uh, and just have failure to thrive. Um, contrast that with the five-year survival for stage one breast cancer is 99%. And most of my patients are very attuned to their breast health. They very much go for their annual breast imaging. Uh, and I think that women need to be as cognizant of bone health, especially as longevity uh, is going through the roof. So let's talk about our role as healthcare practitioners then. So moving beyond bone, when we think about muscle, what's the role of muscle in terms of overall bone health? Well, before I get to muscle, I want to talk about the fact that bone health, uh, and I, I think muscle is important, it's something I'm really involved in now. But things like non-skid rugs in the bathroom, uh, good eyesight. If you live in an area where there's black ice or you have an ability to fall or slip on something, it's extremely important. Maintaining good balance, balance exercise, and this new concept of uh, muscle. Uh, there's muscle mass, there's muscle strength, and there's muscle performance. In fact, this concept uh, of sarcopenia which many people have not heard of, is the inevitable wasting of muscle mass as we age. It is going to happen, uh, but how much it happens or where you fall on the bell-shaped curve uh, is somewhat genetics, but it's also somewhat the, the effort that you put in. Stay with me. For instance, if we think of a bell-shaped curve, the far end of this bell curve is an 82-year-old, a little frail, a little timid, a little unsteady on her feet, the far end on the other side is an 82-year-old with amazing muscle strength, balance, really good physical conditioning. I want all of my patients to be from the midline to the good side, not the midline to the frail, timid side. But Stephen, for us as healthcare pro uh, professionals, and you're speaking to us as healthcare professionals, what is our role in assessing sarcopenia? How do we put that on our radar screen when we're looking at our patients? What is it that we as healthcare practitioners should be doing? Well, certainly, um, as I've already mentioned, there is muscle mass, which is really the first thing that, that happens. Now, muscle mass is not so easy to identify. Certainly, MRI, CT, or special software on your DEXA can look at muscle mass. Some people use uh, bioelectrical impedance measurements, uh, but a rough estimate would even be something as crude as calf circumference. Uh, less than 31 centimeters is associated with decreased muscle mass. When you start talking about uh, strength, something as simple as a hand grip dynamometer uh, can be used to measure uh, strength. 
Uh, and performance, there's a, a test called get up and go where you, from a sitting, from a chair, you get up, you walk around a cone three or four meters away and anything less than 0.8 meters per second is considered diminished performance. These are crude assessments, but even before, or even if you don't have the ability to do that in your office setting, talking to patients about the importance of balance exercise, uh, strength training, just paying some attention to this. Uh, you go online, there, if you just Google balance exercise, after you get through the ads, there are many things. Uh, Philips, the company that makes light bulbs and ultrasound equipment, has 14 exercises to maintain strength and balance for seniors. Uh, and I talked to a woman the other day, 82, who said, well, I'm not gonna get a trainer or join a gym. I said. 15 minutes a day, simple exercises in your home that can help maintain some strength and balance to keep what you have or improve what you have, you know, paying some attention to this. In the past, people simply ordered a DEXA test and they said, you're doing great, or they said, you need a drug. We realize one third of people who break their hip do not have osteoporosis. If you have osteoporosis, certainly your risk is greater. But if you don't have osteoporosis, you're not risk-free. And in fact, there's this newly emerging topic of osteosarcopenia. There's good evidence that if you have any degree of, of bone loss, even osteopenic and not osteoporotic, and you have some sarcopenia, this will triple your risk of falling and quadruples your risk of fracture. And so, so I think, you know, what I hear you saying on what is important for our healthcare practitioners to understand is that DEXA is a single task but it doesn't necessarily assess risk for falls. Now you're talking about assessing bone health very much the way we assess cardiovascular health, looking at all these additional factors that will push you into the direction of being more aggressive in your bone management, both medication as well as building up the muscle mass, which seems critical to do. I couldn't have said it any better myself, Dr. Shapiro. So if we have to give our practitioners one message about looking at the additional features that influence risk for fracture. What can we tell them about muscle, muscle mass, assessing muscle mass and keeping this really front of mind? For now, it's just an awareness of talking to everybody about the importance of movement, balance, strength, uh, putting that into the equation and not simply ordering a DEXA test and treating the score on the DEXA test. We have to walk before we run. You know, you don't have to go out and buy special software for your DEXA machine. You know, you don't have to send people for a CT scan looking for muscle mass. Just thinking about it and talking to patients, looking at people who might appear to be frail, and talking to everybody about the importance of exercise, strength, and balance training uh, is where I'd like to start. It's a prescription well worth writing. Thank you so much for joining us today.